Hi, this screencast is going to walk through sending email attachments using the web form module for Drupal 8. Hello, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as JRockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So just a little like what is an email attachment? Uh, email attachments are computer files sent along with an email message. So we're pretty familiar with that, getting files into our inboxes. And when someone fills out a form, you can send emails and attach a file to it. So how do you send email attachments? Sending email attachments, you know, you have to install and configure a mail module. Out of the box, the web form module supports HTML emails, but it doesn't support email attachments. So you have to go look around, contrib, and find a mail module that will allow you to send attachments. Now, with your email handlers, and that's what sends emails in the web form module, you have to enable attachments, the files to be sent as attachments to that email, because you don't want to automatically start sending attachments to every single email going out. Sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes you want to link back. And then the, the final thing, once you've enabled the ability to have attachments on your emails, is you have to add a file upload or an attachment element to your web form. So to step back with the mail modules, there's kind of two approaches to sending attachments that are supported. And there are a few others that can be integrated gradually over time, but you can install the SMTP module, which supports attachments, or you can install the mail system module, which the mail system module allows integration of multiple mail APIs based on the module, or what type of email you're sending, and you know the mail system allows you to integrate with the Swift Mailer module, which is another kind of protocol to add attachments to your email and some other nice features to it. You got to explore these options and figure out which one you want to do. SMTP is the easiest to set up, and I recommend trying that first if that's appropriate for your organization. So I gotta emphasize this. So this is just a screenshot of an email handler, and you have to make sure to check off this this box, include files as attachments, or you just won't get email attachments working. And so let's go to file uploads because that's one of the most familiar features in the web form module. You can have file uploads on your form. How do you send those as email attachment? Well, this is really more about properly configuring file uploads. And a very important thing you have to do is set up the private files directory. There's a PSA about this, and you want to protect the files so that anonymous users can't just start randomly uploading files to your server and using it as almost like a CDN and storing some really bad stuff. So once you have private files, it protects the files and doesn't allow them to be shared. Then you have to add the file upload element to your form. And you have to enable attachments. I just want to emphasize that. This is the third time I'm bringing it up or it just won't work. And, you know, here's a simple file upload element. I think a lot of people familiar with the Webflow module have seen this. And you can kind of pick the file type. You can see private files is noted at the, the top of this. You can set your settings of file size. And once that's done, that if you have that checkbox set and you're including this file, it'll just get attached to the email. And this is a new feature. And I kind of decided to do this screencast because I was building out this feature. And it's how to send custom generated email attachments. So this is a slightly tricky concept where as I walk you through it, you'll start to understand the, the background behind this is a useful feature. It, it's a dedicated module called the web form attachment module. And it's a sub module. And when you enable it, you get these attachment elements. And there's kind of three types. You can have an attachment generated using tokens, twig, or you can include a URL. And the idea here is it allows site builders to kind of inject files to be attachments to an email. So an example would be like, you might say to someone, fill out this form and we'll, we'll send you a PDF. You'd absolutely use this feature to have that PDF uploaded to your server, configure that attachment of the PDF to your web form submission. And when the email goes out, that PDF would get attached to the email. It's, it's a really common use case where you want someone to fill out a form before you give them some document or file. Another use case and why this module was created was someone needed to send XML packets to, I think it was like an SAP server. And the idea is they want to generate an XML file that's attached to the email, goes to this inbox, and an automated system reads the inbox and the attachment, which is XML, parses it, and generates a record. So. Some more about attachment elements. 
they support custom file names. Attachments kind of act as like, think about it this way, it's more than just an email attachment. It's an attachment to a submission. So that attachment can be linked to from the submissions main page, an individual submission. And this is an important thing to really pay attention to is for security, the URLs must be publicly available. If you're saying, I want to pull this PDF, you can encrypt the URL, like you make it, make it difficult for someone to guess. But for security, you want to make sure someone can't, like a site builder, can't just pick any file off your server and start sending it to people. That's a huge vulnerability. So if it's publicly available, it, it means that like if you know the URL of the file, you can access it. It's a really simple way to make it possible to send attachments without getting into crazy security issues. And what's important with these URLs when you're using them to attach is they're never visible to end users. End users don't know the final URL of the file that you're attaching. It's kind of like there's a proxy that sits in between. So you can set up a custom file name and they never really can get access to that file unless they know the custom URL that you've set up. It's a little tricky, but I can walk through some of it. But I, I want to focus on this feature, which is just an, you know this attachment element generating an XML packet. And you can see that you know here's a file name using tokens. It has a date. You can also make links to these attachments from the submission page. That's what display on is doing. In the first row and then you have your template and those are just injecting tokens of the data being submitted and this one's really simple it's first name last name email and I'm gonna do a little demo here this is the form that we were just kind of looking at it's pre-filled out I'm gonna just do a front-end demo where I'm gonna just hit submit I have debugging tools on so you can actually see an, an enhancement is you can see the attachment and this is what's sent. This is the default email and the attachments here. I'm going to open it in a new tab. And it gets a URL. And it's a very custom URL that's specific to the web form, submission ID, attachment, the name of the field. And that's why you see attachment multiple times, because this is just the namespace. That's the name of the field. And then I actually name the file attachment. Most users won't even see this or notice it, because it's going to basically just send a file that's called attachment dash. 2018 with the date and this is an XML packet you can just see it's very simple but this helps an SAP SAP system to pick up this data and I'll show you the back end a little bit so we're gonna hit back to form hit settings and we gotta to go to email handler here's the handler this is debugging enabled that's why we saw it on screen it's tracking that the email is being sent to HTML and has attachments I click over to edit. We're not gonna look at all the details. There's this attachment, include files as attachments. So this is the configuration that I really emphasize. You have to have this checked. And this does allow you to pick and choose which files are attached in this email. So if I uncheck this, there'll be nothing getting sent. I'm gonna close this. We're gonna jump back over to build. So this is the backend. We're saying, okay, we've configured this correctly. And now let's just look at the attachment element. This is a token attachment. By the way, here's that little warning. I just have to make sure everyone knows to do this. Once you close it, you won't see it again. There's the file name. You can actually give a link title. I'll show you that in the back end. So uh, here, download this. Oh, of course, I'm download this attachment. All right, here's the attachment, XML. There's a little new um, suffix called XML code. Just helps with these tokens if you're injecting into XML, you want to make sure they're valid, um, properly escaped. You can remove some white space, and you can force users to download the content so it doesn't go show them the content in the browser. We could, we could click that on. I'm not going to do anything else here. I'm going to hit save. What I've done is changed how it's going to be displayed. And if we go over to results, because I've submitted the form, you're going to see download this attachment. Now if I click on it, it's automatically going to download to the user's browsers. And if I open this, it'll open up in your local XML editor. Something I want to jump back to. In terms of adding these elements, we're going to go to the build page. We're going to hit add element. And I'm going to type attachment to quickly filter. So the token one we just did, twig works exactly like token, but you can do twigs. So you can have conditional logic, different behaviors. All the other fields are the same. But let's quickly just look at the URL. The idea here is similar settings, file name, path. And what the path does, it allows you to kind of, you can upload a file to your server. I have IMC enabled. 
It could be a remote server, by the way. It could be any URL. And you can go on your server. I mean, these are just standard files, but if there was a PDF, you could select it. I'm going to close this. Go back here. Show it to you some more. And you could obscure it. You can create a file name that's, you know, use a UUID and no one can guess it. And then you can enter in the custom file name for the attachment. It requires a little experimentation, but I hope you get the general concept behind using URLs to attach files. Um, that's pretty much it for this demo. I hope you see kind of the level of flexibility here. It's, it's a very nice feature if you need it. It really depends on your use case. Um, I think it's if you're protecting data, it's useful. If you want to say, here's a file, you got to fill out this form. Perfect for that. Or if you need to send a custom packet. I mean, you could even have this generate custom receipts. So that gets into an interesting concept, you know, filling out something and getting an invoice attached in an email. Uh, that's pretty much it for the demo. I'm going to keep going. And yeah, the big takeaway, you know, with this new element, the attachment element combined with file uploads, anything can be attached to an email now. Incredible amount of flexibility. And just some references, you know, there's some general references on how to send email attachments on Drupal.org you should check out. There's also the change record for the web form attachment submodule that's available on Drupal.org. That is it. Uh, you can, you know, learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. I hope you enjoy this new feature. Take care.